And the legendary guitarist with Queen, Brian May, has been in Leicester addressing academics at De Montfort University. Because apart from being a world-renowned guitarist, Brian is also a doctor of astrophysics and possesses a keen interest in 3D stereoscopic photography, a technique which used to be popular with the Victorians. His latest book on the subject, Diabloris, Stereoscopic Adventures in Hell, has been co-written with one of DMU's PhD students, an expert on this particular genre. So it was appropriate that Jury and I went along to meet him at De Montfort University to talk about the new book. First, though, we were interested to hear what Brian had to say about a family heirloom we took along for him to have a look at. This is a stereographoscope. And uh, I used to see a lot of these in Christie's. I used to spend a lot of time in Christie's and Sotheby's just looking at these things, not being able, able to afford to buy them. But um, it's a good stereo viewer. It's fine. It looks a little bit like my stereo viewer, doesn't it? It's got these two Indeed. lenses here. And it was designed to be used... Normally, there's a, a single lens as well, and you could view postcards. But the main, its main job is to view these stereo cards, which are here in the box. So are these your stereo yes. cards? Yes, I do feel like antiques road. <laughs> <laughs> I would give about £100 for this at all. Would you really? <laughs> no, it's no. probably a bit more than that, I should mm. think, yeah. Now, I've seen a lot of these, yeah. And this is the principle of Victorian stereoscopy. And it kind of looks old-fashioned, but in truth, it's still the best way to see a 3D photograph. There is no better way for your brain to get this sensation of 3D. You know, the cinema is great, what they do. We've all seen Avatar, you know, and you get your cross-Polaroid system there. And uh, we've all seen comics with red and green spectacles. And you know, there, there's lots of ways to do it. But the original Victorian way, invented by Wheatstone and improved by Sir David Brewster about 1840, late 1840s, um, is the best way to see stereo. So that's what this book is my Diabolis book is based on, and that's what my patent owl viewer is based on. It's an old-fashioned stereoscope, but they are still the best. I am blown away by your knowledge of this subject, Brian. I have to say you're, you're very well known, you know, for badgers uh, and the anti-cull yes, and all of that. Very you're so. very well known for your interest in astronomy, mm. and you're quite well known for music, I hear. Do a little bit of music here and there, yes. But, <laughs> Stereoscopic photography, how on earth did that come into your life? It's just always been there since I was a kid, like the astronomy and like the music. It's always been a passion. And uh, it started with Weetabix. You see, it's a real shame. You open your packet of Weetabix these days and there's no toy in there, is there? Why is there no <laughs> toy in cereal packets <laughs> That's anymore? True. I mean, really, I've been trying to persuade them to, to reinvent the... Uh, the philosophy that you should be having a toy with your breakfast. Anyway, you used to get a Weetabix packet and inside would be a card with two little images on it of maybe a zebra or something or a sports car. And you'd think, what is this? There's two little images which look very flat and a bit ordinary. But you send off your packet top and one and sixpence and you get back a little viewer which looked a bit like this, a little stereoscopic viewer. You put your card in the viewer, look through the lenses and suddenly the card is transformed into a window that you feel you could walk through and you could touch that zebra and you could talk to it. You could almost smell it. And um, it was magic to me, and I never, ever got over that thrill. I'm still... I'm a, I'm a complete stereoscopy geek, really, because it still thrills me every time the, the phenomenon happens. You're like a kid in a toy shop, aren't you, Julie? He is a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I love it, yeah. Well, <laughs> boys <laughs> don't grow up to those. Boys and toys, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the pictures that we're looking at today, they're quite macabre. Mm. Um, I mean, interestingly, it seems that your interests stretch literally from astronomy. It's like from heaven to hell, isn't it, really? Yeah, that's <laughs> see what you're doing there, Julie. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's very cool. clever, isn't she? She's not yeah, bad, she's you know. Right. Mind you, she's had a decent trainer over the years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, you're right, really, mm. yeah. Well, you have to remember... I'm going to sidestep this. Uh, <laughs> very wise. <laughs> you have to remember that Victorians had no TV, no internet, no movies, so the stereoscope was their window on the world. So you will find every conceivable subject in stereoscopic cards... And people like me go around and collect them all their lives. About 50 years or so I've been collecting them. And there is every subject represented. You'll see um, a 3D picture of Charles Dickens, for instance, Gladstone. Um, you'll see landscapes the way they were in the 1850s, and you can compare them with what they're like now. You can see buildings which were uh, glorious at the time and are now in ruins. You can see the Sphinx as it was in those days before the, the nose was blown off. Um, actually, not quite before the nose was blown, but it's in better shape than it is now. 
so, you know, you, you have a whole world waiting to be discovered in stereoscopic cards. But until now, they haven't been very accessible because they don't fit with the internet. They don't fit with TV, really. You can't even... There is 3D TV now, but it seems to be struggling somewhat. But this is a different experience. This would, this would be in your, um, your, your dressing room. No, your um, living, room. living room, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Or your dressing room. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you would share these 3D images with your friends. And it's a very kind of intimate sharing experience. And we can do it now, if you like, because this stereoscope folds up into a, into a very serviceable instrument in that amount of time. And this comes with a book, doesn't it? This is, it comes flat in the book, inside the slipcase, and it looks like a toy, as I say, but this is a pretty serious stereo stereoscope because it focuses. You hold the back and you can focus with your thumbs, so no matter what your eyesight's like, the, the, the thing is going to work for you. There's a bit of a trick in the lenses, which I won't bother you with, but it really helps your stereoscopic experience. So this is made to to view stereoscopic cards, but really this is a, a book stereoscope. So all these images in Diablerie's, the book, are stereoscopic, all these ones on the right-hand page. This is what the card looks like when it's illuminated normally from the front. This is what it looks like when it's illuminated from the back, and magically these incredible colours come through. Magically the eyes glow red at you and all sorts of jewellery wow. sparkles. That's They're just amazing. incredible things. But the biggest magic of all, of all is putting your stereoscope on and viewing it as someone in the 1860s would view it. <laughs> wow, that really is amazing. Talk about one picture saying a, a thousand words. See, I love that. I love the oh. wow, I love the amazing. That, that is, is amazing. Did you expect that? Not at all. No, oh. I'd read about it, the red eyes and everything, mm. but mm. not until you actually see through wow, that viewer does it all leap off the page yeah. to you. They do. Mm. That's quite incredible. I love wow. incredible. incredible. Incredible is called wow. So now you see why I've, I've been entranced by this for so many years. And I, I wanted to find a way to communicate it to the 21st century. And this is it, folks. This is the dream come true. It must have been quite frustrating for you having an interest like this um, during the earlier part of your life where music literally took over your life and you wouldn't have had time, uh, mm. the time to, to put into researching this stuff. That's right. I mean, it never left me. And in all those days with Queen, you know, I would arrive in Chicago or Paris or Sydney and I'd get up in the morning and go and find the dealers who would help me find stereo cards. No, not drugs, folks. <laughs> I didn't do I the drugs. Say, I said... know what was going through your mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, you see, other people would do the drug dealers. I would do the stereoscopic card dealers. And I found these things all around the world. So it never left me. And I didn't have time to pursue it and write books and stuff. But through that 40 years or so, I was able to accumulate pretty much the entire collection of these Diabolis, and they're incredibly rare. They're really difficult to find. First 72 are hard enough to find. After that, it gets worse. And some of these um, cards here in, in the later series are just ridiculously rare. In fact, um, there's a couple that we haven't been able to find. Out of 180, we're two missing. So we're hoping that oh. this book, tantalizingly, we're, we're hoping that we will find the other two from someone who will, will get triggered by this book. So here's the Diablerie's book. It's got his trumpeting devil on the front. He's very distinctive. And on the front of the slipcase, you see we have a, a different kind of stereoscopic image. It's a lenticular. Oh, wow. So that actually works. That looks like a hologram to me. It's like a 3D, isn't it? It's kind of like a hologram. It's a lenticular. It's, it, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's another kind of trick to give you a stereoscopic image. But it, it, you look like you could put your hand around you do. The, you do. the devil, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. It's so clever. So that gives you a hint. Yeah, I'm fascinated by all, by all kinds of stereo. This university, of course, is one of the um, present pioneers of holography, which is yet another kind of stereoscopic imaging. And we just had a demonstration from Martin, the guy here, which was phenomenal. We just made a, a hologram of my pair of glasses and my cufflink here, which happens to be a little devil. Oh, nice little skull. So, you know, stereoscopy is very much in our lives, and it's always poised to take over, but it never quite does it. You know, we, we, you, you talked about Avatar. You know, everybody loves Avatar, I think. You know, I think it's a wonderful Fantastic. piece of work. Yeah. And I hear Gravity is incredible as well. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, we're going to see mm, that. We've got to see that. Okay. That's Sandra Bullock. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's so much you can do. Technology is yeah. advancing so far. We have some people that we're just beginning to work with who have an app for your, your iPhone. And when you look at one of these pages in the Diablerie's book, the skeletons will come out and dance around. Oh. And you can go, you can zoom right into them, right in, look them straight in the eyes, you can go around them. Amazing. And they've managed to bring these skeletons to life, which was another dream. So you might see a, a Diablerie's film at one point. 
if we can get that together. Get well, that look, together. Brian, it's been an absolute delight to talk to you. I've got so many yeah. other things I would like to talk to you about. Yeah, badges. We still Time badges. is against us. We haven't talked about badges. We haven't talked about... at this moment. We haven't been able to talk badges. about um, your Strongly. late great friend, Patrick Moore. Ah, Patrick, indeed. Yes, I'm very yeah. much involved with his estate, and I think we're doing him proud. I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, we, we, we think about Patrick the whole time. And um, there will be a permanent exhibit in the Science Museum dedicated to him, so I'm quite excited about sadly that. Sadly not at Farthings, his former home. No, well, you can say sadly, but it's actually not what Patrick wanted, you know, and his last wish, I remember one of his, you know, people are saying, the, somebody published a horrible article about me saying Brian May is not fulfilling Patrick's last wish. It's all rubbish, because his last wish really that his life, well, his priority was his cat's. First priority was take care of my cats because they're the most precious things in my life. Second is take care of my library, which we're doing. And the third wish was don't make me look stupid. <laughs> you know? So, you know, Patrick had a wonderful sense of humour. He's also a great animal campaigner. And one of the things that I'm going to do, hopefully in the near future, is republish his famous work, which is called Against Hunting, because he was a fearsome adversary of hunting. And that's one of the, one of the reasons we all loved him so much. Diablo is Stereoscopic Adventures in Hell by Brian May, Paula Fleming and Denis Perrin is out now. Here's the man himself, on lead guitar of course, with his band Queen. Oh, that raunchy guitar work from Brian May. He was telling me after our chat on air started out playing the ukulele and still does good man